So yeah, um, I'm Martin, and I'm with this company called um, RoboEDU. We mostly teach something related to robotics or programming. We do a lot like Roblox Studio programming, Python, Scratch, and all that. But before we start, though, anyone has any experience with Python? No? Everybody new? No. Nope. What about anyone with any experience with Scratch? Anyone done Scratch before? Oh, I done Scratch in school. Oh, but Jennifer did. Really Jonathan did. It. Yeah, it is pretty fun. Scratch. I mean, Python. It's very similar in Scratch, but except that you have to write everything and a little bit more complicated. Oh no, no, Kathy. Anyone else? Okay, but yeah, guess we're gonna start everything from scratch. <laughs> now we're starting everything from Python, but let's start out. And let me start sharing my screen and then we're gonna do a little introduction to Python, hold up. All right, so everybody see my screen, right? Okay, yeah. so if that's the case, let's start. So first question though, anyone knows why do we need programming? Why do we need programming? What is that for? Yeah, Jennifer? I think it's like programming so that we can like be smart. Because I think, pro I think programming is like cool. Mm -hmm. That's a good answer. So whenever my sister so whenever like one of my friends ask me, do you, uh, do you, do you know how to like do Python? Then I don't need to say no. <laughs> but what do you use that for though? That's a question. What do you use programming for? Use programming for, I don't really know, but I think it's for like to <laughs> make videos or to make games. Yeah, to make, make games. games. That's one way. Yeah, a lot of things you can do it. But then um, essentially it's because of this. Anyone knows what binary is? Oh, yeah, somebody sign in the chat, let me see. Yeah, anyone knows what binary is? No? Um, but anyone knows what is zeros and ones are? The zeros and ones over here. Okay, so let me explain. Um, Essentially, believe this or not, but this is the only thing that your computer can understand. Everything when it comes down to it, to the computer is a whole bunch of zeros and ones, okay? So it doesn't matter what you're seeing inside of a computer, I don't know what games you guys play, Minecraft, Roblox, all it comes down to it, it's just a whole bunch of zeros and ones, all right? So that's what binary is. And that's why we need programming. So programming is to translate what we understand to what the computer understands. So obviously I don't understand zeros and ones. What does that even mean? What does this bunch of stuff even mean, right? So programming is translating what we understand to what the computer understands. So we're gonna tell the computer to do what, it, uh, what we want it to do. So that's why we need programming, okay? So um, let's see if you guys understand some basic programming stuff. So these are the most popular languages in I mean, it should be 2021 now. <laughs> Let me change this right now, 2021. So Python, Java, JavaScript, this one's called C Sharp, PHP, C and C++. Anyone heard of any one of those? Like Python, Java, JavaScript, do you guys know uh, what each one of the languages is used I mean, for? Uh, hold on. Anyone else? I mean, I've heard of Python, Java, JavaScript before, and I think I've heard of C Sharp before, I guess. But do you know what they are used for, though? That's a question. No, not uh, sure. Well, okay, hold on. Something just happened, and my audio level got. What do you mean? What are they used for? Hold on. So, like, um, what is Java used for, for example? Yeah, Jennifer, you want to answer? Well, I think Java. I don't really know what Java is used for. Um, this is my guess. Mm -hmm. Okay, Take so guess. Java is used for to like answer questions like you make this thing thingy and then and then like you answer a question and then it like answers it. And it also is. I know mm -hmm. what um isn't there like Unity? Unity is to like make games. Yes. Well Unity is not really a programming language. What Unity is is called a game engine. 
So that is for you to make games, just like Roblox Studio, it's a game engine. But C Sharp is used in Unity. You see this guy over here? Let me make a thicker pen. This guy over here is called C Sharp. C Sharp is the programming language used in Unity to make games. So that's one thing. But yeah, that's good. Let's see though. Okay, let's, um, if you're not sure, let's guess, all right? So phone apps, especially Android apps, what language do you think they're written in? Take a guess. Anyone guessing number one, Python? I think it's Java. Java, all right. Anyone think it's JavaScript? You can raise your hand or anything. No, nobody thinks it's JavaScript. What about C Sharp though? Can we use C Sharp to write apps, Android apps? No? Well, the answer is, Jennifer, you're right. <laughs> it is mostly written in Java. Python can do that too, but it's not that common. The most common thing is Java to write Android apps. Pretty good. That was a good guess. Well, you knew that or you guessed it? I've heard from my sister because she because she already learned Python, Java, JavaScript, and now she wants to learn C -sharp. Oh, that's good. She's already pretty experienced then. Okay, so yeah, the answer is Java. Next question though, like um, systems, your Windows system or your Mac system, one link, what languages are written in? C sharp? Anyone think in C sharp? PHP. PHP? Yes, it's that was PHP. My guess. Okay, so what about the last one? Anyone guessing this one? You can raise your yeah, hand. Probably, um, I mean, probably the last yeah. one. Oh, you're, go you're going for the last one? Yeah. Okay, so the correct answer is the last one, that's right. <laughs> it is C or C++. Usually any large or complicated program is written in this language because it makes things run a lot faster. So before like most so the video games is written this one. Right now, because computers are running faster, you don't need the video games to run fast anymore. So they don't use this one anymore. But before most of the games are written in this one as well. Okay, so that's good. <laughs> Somebody got it right. Let's see, websites. What language is a website built on? So any website, YouTube, Google, what are they yeah, built on? I've heard this one before. I think it's yeah. Python. Python, okay, that's good. Anyone thinking it's Java? No, uh, I'm, thinking it might be, it's Java? I'm thinking it might be JavaScript. Oh, somebody thinks it's JavaScript. Okay. What about last one, PHP? Anyone thinks it's gonna be PHP? No, really? Okay, so the answer is, that was a trick question because it's all of them. <laughs> wow, so, I don't like trick questions. <laughs> Yeah, that was a trick question. So yeah, because it really depends. Um, if you're talking about large website like YouTube, right? YouTube is a super large website. Then it's, it probably uses everything, everything that you see up here. But the difference is that 95% um, of the website uses JavaScript. Mm -hmm. About 50 uses Py um, PHP. Some of them use Python, some of them use Java, not that many. Java is more common, but very few use Python for website. But the most common one for website is JavaScript. But really depends on what you do. You might need to combine a few different languages to do websites anyway. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that was good. <laughs> that was a trick question. Now I know there are trick questions. Mm -hmm. So let's do the next one though. Mm -hmm. Games, we just talked about this. What languages are they written in? Yeah, Jennifer? C sharp, C sharp. C sharp, that's good. But anyone thinks it's Java? No? No? We? Really? No one thinks it's Java? Anyone thinks it's JavaScript? Is this a trick question, too? <laughs> it might be. Is it? Or is it not? Hold on, I couldn't unmute for a second. My second guess is. Wait, my second guess is all of them. Yeah. Actually, my guess is all of them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm also going to guess all of them. That's right. It is um, all of them. Here's the so thing. this is also uh, a trick on. question. Hold on, hold on. Here's the thing. Um, yeah. on the on the on the left side, we can see the slides. Yeah, I saw. We can see there. the answers. 
If, oh, if, yeah? the text the, if the text stays the same, then wait, we'll hold up. Them. That's so that's cheating. Stop cheating. Oh my god. It's not my fault you did that. This is only for one question. <laughs> On the way around. Yeah, that's it. right. One question. All right. Question. Yeah, but that's right. You guys I mean, got it right. It is all the first question, but you should probably change that. <laughs> yeah, I should have probably actually run the PowerPoint, but then yeah, that would, then, that would work screen. better. <laughs> but either way, this was only for fun. Not really testing your knowledge or anything. Okay. So the answer is all of them. It really depends on where the game is played, right? If it was played on an Android phone, it's probably written in Java. So like Minecraft, they have a Java version on your desktop. So that was that one was built in Java. JavaScript is a web-based game. Then it'll be a JavaScript. So any web-based games that you play will be JavaScript. So Scratch itself is mostly built in JavaScript. C Sharp. Most of the games from Unity is built in C Sharp. So that's why C Sharp is one as well. C++, just like I mentioned before, even though right now, uh, most of the Xbox games or PS5 games are built in C um, or C++ because it runs super fast. Okay, so now um, mm -hmm. here comes the question. Where's Python used? Yeah, Jennifer? To make questions. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Where is it used? No cheating. Stop looking at the next slide. <laughs> to make questions. Yes. Um, in a way, it can. It can do that. That's true. So make a, something like a quiz. It can do that. But the reason why Python is becoming more and more popular right now, it is because of artificial intelligence. You guys know what that is? What that is essentially? Yeah. What is artificial intelligence? I have an artificial intelligence at home. Like what is that though? It's called Alexa. Yeah, that's right. Alexa is some type of artificial intelligence. Mm -hmm. Not that smart yet, but that's right. That's one type of it. But yeah, essentially what we are doing mm -hmm. with artificial intelligence is that we're trying to create a human brain inside of the computer. If a computer can think like us, um, then we don't need to do anything. <laughs> so that's why we're trying to create AI. But right now what we're doing is that um, we are teaching the computers to learn. Yeah, Jennifer, you have a question? But uh, isn't like making these like things like these powerful robots, I feel like robots are going to like overrule the earth by some Maybe. Yeah, <laughs> Maybe yeah but isn't will. that like um harm to the isn't that harming the um earth? Um probably not. I think human does more harm to earth than robots, I guess. But we're not sure because we cannot build any AI yet. So we're okay. gonna actually see if that's gonna happen. Okay? Because nobody knows what's gonna happen, really, if we can actually recreate human inside of a computer. But yeah, right now, um, some examples that you are seeing right now is like Alexa or Siri. Um, very popular one right now would be like self-driving. So in the future, cars will be able to drive itself. It'll be because of AI, something like that. But Python is mostly used in that area. So teaching um, computers to learn. So that is called machine learning or like um, data analytics. So to analyze different kinds of data that you're giving to the machine. Yeah, Jennifer? I heard that there are like other, a lot of powerful AIs. Mm -hmm. um, there is a actual, because of this COVID crisis, um, in Korea, they made this, um, like this, a robot. It looks yeah. like a, it looks like an actual person, and then they like help around the hospital. Oh yeah, maybe there are some of them like that, but usually it's there's a very fine line between a regular robot and an AI. If it just does um, some certain tasks, it will be just a regular robot. But if it can learn and grow, then it becomes an AI. It really depends on what type of robot that is. If you can only do like one thing, like delivering this thing to that place, that's just a robot. 
But if you can learn to do something um, more, then it'll become an AI. Yeah. Scientists like a uh, made a robot that bleeds. Yeah, I know. They're making robots to do really interesting stuff. Well, have you guys seen that Boston Dynamic robots? It's really creepy. Boston Dynamic. Uh, Dynamics. Hold up. Let me see if I can search for it. Boston Dynamics. They are the lead in robotics right now. Why do they want to make robots? So that we don't have to do anything. <laughs> and people are going to get lazy. And they're going to get fat. Uh, no, we're going to be free. That's why. <laughs> and then when, up. In like years past, you're going to. And then when you get fat. Yeah, so like those to. things are like Boston Dynamic Robots. They're like the leading in robotics right now. Uh, they can do like pretty amazing things like balance. Those type of robots can actually um, walk or behave like a person. Look at this. This looks like a person walking, right? Look at this. I don't oh want God. one of those near me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it looks scary, I know. But then it's amazing though, the things that they can do now. In the future, we'll probably do... <laughs> They're dancing, okay. <laughs> I didn't know that. Look at this robot dog. It doesn't even look like a dog. What, that's the purpose of a robot dog. It's a robot dog, it's not a real dog. Yeah. Uh, uh... <laughs> It's a head of a swan, a body of a horse. Yeah, that's right. But then think about it, they'll be able to do a lot of dangerous stuff for us. Because if they're broken, they can be fixed. But if like we lost an arm or leg, then there's no way to recover that. So mm -hmm. that's the, some, some of the things that they can do instead of us. And that way it frees us from those dangerous jobs. So there's a lot of AI um, going to this to just keep it balanced. What are what do they do? What do they do? It really depends. So this robot dog over here is used a lot in manufacturing. So they can um, move stuff around. That'd be a good thing. Because some of the things might be heavy for people to lift. They're gonna use the robot to lift that. A regular robot will be not flexible enough, but those ones are very flexible. How can that light, like small robot carry heavy? <laughs> I know it looks kind of scary, but um, the potential is limitless. Oh. Eventually, they're gonna get closer and closer to what a human will look like to a point that we won't be able to distinguish them. All right, so that's AI and that's Python. But enough of that, let's actually start writing some code since we're doing the Python class, right? Okay. So um, to do that though, uh, let's go on this website called Online Python Compiler. Let me send the chat, uh, so let me send the link in the chat. You can just click on the link. Wait, where is the chat? Hold up. Okay, so if you want to. You can click on the link to open, and then we're going to start writing some Python code together. So can you just search for online Python compiler or just click on the link? Oh, sorry. Can you send the link in the chat? Oh, yeah, that's right. Sorry, I sent it to one person. <laughs> Kenneth, sorry, I just sent it to you. Should have sent it to everybody. There you go. All right, so you can click on it. And then we're gonna write our first line of code. It's first line of code for everybody, right? Okay, so um, if that's the case, let me first start by explaining what some things that you're seeing on here. So if you click on run, don't click yet. Wanna hold that. <laughs> if you click on run though, you'll be able to run the program that you wrote. And then the result of that, it's gonna get this plate over here on this side. So this side is where you write the program. This side is where you see the result after the run. And also anything with a hashtag or the pound key at the beginning, 
means this line is a common. What common is is that common is for people to read. Computer doesn't read this common. It is for people to read. Okay. So um, really, the only line of program right now is print hello world. Okay. So now, if you guys are ready, just click on run. You'll be running your first line of program. All right. So click on it. I clicked on that, it. That's good. Then you're going to see the result on the shell over here. Um, this thing is also called a terminal. It's where you see the result of whatever you printed. Or if there's something wrong with your program, it's going to tell you over here on this side as well. All right. Congratulations. You guys are programmers now. OK. But yeah, now let's write more stuff. Let's do some more complicated stuff. So um, some of you have done Scratch before. So you guys know what variables are. What is a variable? What is that used for? If you've done Scratch, you probably use that a lot. No? Variables? Anyone I don't else? know what a variable is. Really? You never use that in Scratch? Well, like I done, I just like, play on scratch oh so you don't make um games on scratch when you, okay when the variable, i do when... make i made a um balloon game oh yeah that's good uh, yeah so what is a variable then anyone else wouldn't the, wouldn't the variable be an uh factor that would constantly be changing depending on certain situations did you get that from google <laughs> no i have friends who know how to do things like this yeah, I mean, that sounds a very Google-like answer. It is true. It is something like that. <laughs> That's not wrong. But then a variable is when it comes down to it, it keeps track of the information. That's what it does. So let's make some, okay. So first we're gonna make a variable that will keep track of, let's say our name. So the way to do it, first, you're gonna write down the name of the variable. For example, right now, I'm gonna write down first name as the name of the variable because it's gonna keep track of my first name. So I'm gonna do that first name. So this is the way to create a variable. But once you create this variable though, you gotta tell the program, what is this variable gonna keep track of? So the information that you're gonna give to this variable. And then in this case, we're gonna have that to um, keep track of my first name, which is Martin. Okay, so just like that, but make sure you have to put a quote around that. And I'll explain what that is later. You have to put a quote around any text because Martin is a text, right? So you have to put a quote around that. Okay, so now let's um, print first name. How, before we print though, what do you think is going to get printed? What do you think you're going to see on the right side? Anyone can answer? Gonna Something's print. going to get printed. I'm going to say, um, Martin. That's right. It's good. Hello so world it, and Martin. Yeah, that's right as well. So first it's going to print out the hello world at the beginning, and then it's going to print my name. So if you want to, you can write your name as well. So if I run it, it's going to say this. Okay, so let's see if yours is working. All right, so again, now this variable is gonna keep track of my first name. So again, that's what a variable is. It keeps track of some information. Okay, so see if that works. Does it matter like how many spaces I put? Oh, you mean the space over here? Yes. Uh, nope, you can hit like a lot of enters. Any unused space is gonna get ignored by the program. It says error. <gasps> oh, oh, <laughs> oh, why though? It, uh, when um, it says, let me show you, if it says an error, it'll tell you what kind of error and what line. Okay, so if I run this thing right now, you see, I have an error too. So something trace back, something, something, file, string, something. But over here, it tells you what line you're having problem with. It says here, line five is where the error is. And then I'm gonna look at line five and then I'm gonna see what's wrong with it. Oh no, 
And then over here, it says it's the name error. Name margin is not defined. So again, that's why. Remember, we're going to put a quote around this thing. And I run yeah. it again. Oh, I did like the exact same thing. I like caught. Really? Really? Yeah. Is it sure? Are you sure? Yes. All right. But you can share your screen and I'll be able to see what type of error that is. Okay. So I'm going to stop sharing and I can share yours. Hold up. Let me see. Um, is it, yep. You can share yours. Okay. So a very important skill in um, programmer is um, to debug. Debug means to find out the problem with your code. Yeah, run it. Oh, I was saying that's good. It. Yeah, try again. So I do. Now we're gonna see. Mm -hmm. First name. And oh, so I think that's where the problem is. It's first name. That's right. You got to write down the first name first. So you have to make a variable first. First name. Yep. But let me talk about this thing. So when you're making a variable, you cannot use any space in between. That part matters. So making a name, though, you cannot use any space in your name. So probably get rid of the space in between first and name. So like I don't make a space? Yeah, don't use any space in here. Yep, there you go. Then that will work. So yeah, let me show you one more time though. I'm gonna start sharing my screen again. Okay. So, that, so is, it is very important when you are making, this thing is called, um, it's the name of your variable. So variable, you can think of it as a container. Inside of this container, we have this name Martin, but the name of the container is this one. Right now it's called first name. Also, when you're making the variable though, it's pretty important. Um, name, you cannot use any space. You cannot use any real symbols. For example, I cannot use first, um, let's say this, it's not gonna work. Or bracket, oh. it's not gonna work. <clears throat> so it's or, like, yeah. you're using first name for example, like a, a, like a folder, and then when you put in the code print first name, you're printing, like out, everything, you're printing out everything in that folder. For example, mm -hmm. we put Martin as the text with the quote, quotes. Since we put Martin as the variable when first name is that variable, we put print That's first right. name, it prints out the variable. Or That's whatever right. it's put as a variable. Yeah, exactly. So this is the variable. When you print the variable though, you're printing whatever that's inside of the variable. Okay. But yeah, another thing is that when you're making the name for the variable, you cannot use any space. But there are two weird symbols that you can use. So you can use underscore, that works. First underscore name, that works or first dash main that works as well. But anything else like bracket, it's not gonna work. Star, it's not gonna work. Um, whatever this thing is, it's not gonna work. Or like this thing percentage sign, it's not gonna work either. So usually when people are making names, they have this way of doing it. So this is called a camel case, first name, which means every other word, you use a capital for it. So this thing called, it's called camel case. Yeah, something like that. So let me change uh, my variable name to something like this. First name equals to Martin. Okay. So now I can also make last name. Let's do that. Last name equals, this is my last name. Sorry. Okay. So if I want to join the first name and last name together and I'll put them at the same time, I can do first name plus last name. I got to change this to capital as well. All right, if I run this, what do you think is going to get printed? Probably hello world, Martin, you, whatever you pronounce yep. that. That's right, it's gonna print the whole name. Okay, that's good. 
So this type of variable is called string. Let me write it down. Hold up, where's my text? String. So this is what it's called. What it means is just that this is going to be some kind of text. That's what string means. Okay. All right. So next one. The, oh no! Here comes the interesting question. Um. Let's say I have a number one. Num one means number one equals to eight. Num two equals to ten. If I print num1 plus num2, what's going to get printed? Um, 810. <laughs> That's right. So if I run it right now, this one is going to print me 810 instead of adding these two numbers together because the program right now is looking at this and thinking that this is one text and then this is another text. You cannot do any math to text. Okay, so that's why it's printing me a 10. But so if we wanna actually do some calculation with a program though, how to do it? So the way to do it, it is by removing the quotes around it. If we do like num1 equals to eight, num, oh no, num2 equals to 10, and I print num1 plus, I oh know how to use num1, num2, let me do num3, num4, num3 plus num4. What's the answer of this? What's it gonna be now? It's probably not a 10. But if I run this thing though, you're gonna see, it's actually gonna print me 18. So in this case, this type of variable, it um, becomes what's called integer. Integer is the same thing as your math integer. It just means it's a whole number. If it's an integer, you can do math to it. You can do addition, subtraction, modification, all that stuff you can do to it. So that's the difference between these two. Because if I print num1 and I print num3, both are gonna put um, output three. Let me just show you. If I print num1 and I print num3 and I run it, both of them are three. Oh, sorry, both of them are eights. But then these two are not the same. One is a text, one is a number. So here are some tricky stuff inside of Python. Well, so, so far we talked about two things, two types of information that a variable can keep track of. The first type is text, which is called string. The second type is a number, which is called integer. Okay, so that's the idea. But yeah, now, um, interesting question. <laughs> if I make a variable number equals to 10 and I make um, do number equals to 20 and I print number. Let's see, let me just comment all this thing out. So that's not gonna um, appear, um, interfere with our code. So what is it gonna be if I print number right now? Anyone wanna guess? If I print number, number equals to 10, number equals to 20, what's gonna happen? What, do you, what are you gonna see? Are you gonna see 10 or are you gonna see 20? Or is it gonna give you some kind of error? No? What do you guess? I mean, so you could just randomly guess both. Both? 30? What? Who said 30? No, 10 and then 20. 10 and then 20, okay. So let me run it. If I run it, it actually prints 20. Anyone knows why? Rachel got it right. But Rachel didn't know why though. Okay, so the reason why it prints 20 over here, sort of, it is the latest. It is because 
Python reads your program line by line, okay? It's gonna read it from top to bottom, line by line. So when it reads this line, it means we're setting the number to 10. And then reads this line, and it means we're setting the number to 20. So first time it read it, it's gonna set the number to 10. And then after it sets the number to 10, it sets the number to 20. So that's why you're saying 20 over here. Okay, so that's why you're seeing 20 instead of 10. So that part, um, again, Python reads your program line by line. That's why. All right. So, but that's also what variable is, right? Variable means something that can change. So that's why you have a number equals to 10 and you can change the number to be 20. But anyone can give me an example of where variable is used. Where do you think the variable is used? If you've done some scratch before, you probably know some of the cases they use variable. Anyone? So you can think of some places in games or in whatever. No? Okay, so let me give you an example. Um, for variables though, a very common place to use that would be like your player's health. You need something to keep track of health, right? How do you know like how, um, how much health the players still have left? So that's where you use variable. So in some games, variable is used to keep track of a timer. You can know the time they spend in the game or how, um, however much time is left in the game. So those are some um, places variable is used. So there's a lot more, but that's um, that for integer. At least that's where integer is used. It used to keep track of health or lives or timer or speed, something like that. So for if you're doing like a driving game, right? So the speed of the car changes in that way. We need a variable to keep track of that speed. So anything that changes is gonna be a variable. That's what variable means literally. Okay, so now we just covered two types. Let's talk about another type. Another type of variable is very straightforward. It's either true or false. That's the only information it keeps track of. It's either true or false. So for example, I can make one right now. I can do, am I hungry? So this variable is gonna keep track of only one information is whether I'm hungry or not. If I am, it's gonna be true. If I'm not, so let's say if I eat, right? If I, um, after I finish eating my dinner, I'm probably not gonna be hungry, then this variable is gonna become false. So that's what this thing is gonna keep track of. Also, this type of variable is what is called Boolean. Boolean doesn't make any sense, but that's what it's called, Boolean. Okay, that's how you spell it. It doesn't make any sense, but that's what it's called. There's nothing we can do about it. So again, Boolean is either true or false. Let me give you an example of where this thing is used. For example, if I have a game, right? Um, something's gonna happen after I beat the boss. For example, I can go to next level or I don't know, some ending credits is gonna roll. So in that case, I probably need a variable to keep track of whether the boss is dead or not. So is boss dead? will be a variable that we're gonna to use to keep track of whether we beat the boss or not. So at the beginning, it's gonna be false. And then if you beat the boss, then it's boss that it's boss death, it's gonna become true. And then something else happens. So that's another situation where this variable is used. All right, so here are some basic variable stuff. There are a lot more to it. But this will be enough for now for variables. So yeah, let me show you how that one works in Scratch. For those who have done Scratch, 
those who have handled Scratch is uh, very easy way for to make games. We have variable here. This is how you make a variable. So that's what I'm saying. Scratch and Python is very similar. You can just make a variable and then give it a name, give it a value. So that's where it's used. Okay. But yeah, we're gonna talk about more um, more things like this. For example, how do we do forever? Something like this inside of Python. How do we do if inside of Python or if then else or repeats? Okay, so probably let's try if first though. How do we do it if inside of Python? Let me show you. So let's think of a situation right now where we're gonna need if statements. I'm gonna delete this for now because I don't need that. But for you though, if you wrote it down, you probably it's better for you to probably just keep track of it somewhere so that you can have that for reference. You know, I'm just gonna comment it out. But I'm gonna say if, um, okay, so let's say I'm going to a store, a pet store, okay? And I saw the pet. If it's a cat, then I'll buy it. If it's a dog, then I'm not gonna buy it. Okay, so something like this. How do we write this case inside of programming though? Let me show you. First thing, you need a variable to keep track of what type of animal that is, right? So that based on what animal that is, we can decide whether we're gonna buy it or not. So first animal is gonna equal to cat. We're gonna put quotes around text. And then we're gonna evaluate what this animal is. And then based on that, we decide whether we buy it or not. So if animal, the way to evaluate is by doing this thing, two equals. <laughs> two equals, I'll explain um, why two equals later. Two equals. And then if animal equal equal cats. So this means if animal is cat, then I'm gonna print, I will buy that. Okay, so if I run this thing right now, let me clear this. If I run it right now, it's gonna print, I will buy that. But if I change the animal to dog though, and I run it, nothing's gonna happen. So I'm gonna create an other condition for that. So first thing it's gonna look at is whether this animal is a cat. If it's a cat, it's gonna print, I'll buy that. But otherwise, if it's a dog, I'll probably print something like I'll consider it. I don't hate dog. I just don't like it as much as I like cats. So else if, the way to write it is L if. L if means else if. So this means the first thing it checks is whether the animal is a cat or not. If it is, then it's gonna check whether the animal is dog or not. I'm gonna print, I will consider that. Okay, so now if I run it, it's gonna print, I will consider that. But if I change it to cat, it's gonna print, I would buy that. Okay, so now um, we want something to, um, let's say any other animal than cat and dog, we're just gonna do, I'm not buying that, okay? So the way to do that is I will write a else. Else means every other cases than cat, or dog. So then the ones that you specified before, else we're just gonna print, I am not buying that. Okay, something like that. So right now it's cat, if I run it, it's gonna say I'll buy that. If it's dog, it's gonna say I will consider that. But let's say if it's something like um snake and I run it, it's gonna print, I'm not buying that or anything else really, I can do like spider. It's gonna print, I'm not buying that. So that's the way to do a basic if. Okay. So something like this. Yeah, so if statement is used very often 
in um, programming really depends on what you do. You use that all the time. But something like in real life though, we can probably do another example. For example, um, like very common one is traffic lights, okay? So like traffic lights, if the light is red, you're gonna stop. If the light is green, then you're gonna go. But if the light is yellow, what do you do when the light is yellow though? Anyone else, what do you do? Anyone, what do you do when the light is yellow? It really depends. <laughs> but yeah, if the light is red, uh, if, if the light is yellow, some cases you speed up, some cases you slow down, it really depends. Okay, so let's say something like that. How do we write it in um, programming though? So this is animal, pretty easy. We're just gonna do traffic light instead of animal. So traffic, oh, you know what? Let me just did it this thing and then write a new thing. Traffic light, oh, no, again, no space, light equals to red. And then we're gonna evaluate if traffic lights equal equal red. We're gonna print stop. Else if, and then you write LF as else if, traffic lights equal equal green. Then we're gonna print go. One more case, LF traffic lights equal equal yellow. Then you're gonna print slow down, maybe slow down, slow down something like that. So now this program is gonna run based on whatever traffic light is. Okay, so that's the idea. That's traffic lights, that's if statement. Okay, so I'll say that's probably enough for just the introduction of Python. Um, I can probably show you some sample projects that um, you might be able to build. Let me show you some of the things. Hold up, give me a second. So we're gonna be building games together inside of Python though, if you decided to um, sign up, let me show you something like this. No, nope, probably not this one. Give me a second. Haven't really decided on which one yet, but yeah, maybe something like this. This one will be good. Okay, so probably let me show you that. Hold up, let me share a different screen. How do I switch a screen, new share? Yeah, you won't be able to see that either. You let me share the whole desktop, okay? So yeah, this is how you build and I think probably not in two months, but eventually you'll be able to build something like this. So a very simple game. You'll be able to shoot the enemies. If the enemy is hit, then they're gonna disappear, something like that. So the whole project is gonna be more and more game-based as you are learning more and more about it. We're gonna be building a lot of different games together. Okay, and also um, if you decide to sign up though, this is gonna be one and a half an hour class for, this, for the last half an hour of the class, we're gonna be doing this thing called Code Combat, which is, um, some sort of platform that will allow you to learn programming through playing games. Okay, well, I guess that will be all for what I do today though. All right, so Michael, you probably can take over from here.